these are strange times. In the build up to the 2019 elections, we are coming across many fantastic uh, stories. Some of them are so incredible that when one comes across them, one cannot actually believe that it is happening around you. And I think the most glaring example of that is how, especially in the whole WhatsApp university, the vilification of Jawaharlal Nehru that is taking place. The language that is used to talk about him, we would not even use such language to talk about anybody, even about a criminal, a proven criminal, we would not use such language because when we use bad language, we actually show our own low cultural level. It actually, that brings us down and it should bring us down in our own estimation, but obviously some people don't do that. In fact, I would say that even about our present Prime Minister, about whom we have a lot of very strong disagreements and criticism, I would not like that we use bad language about him. We should conduct our public discourse in a civilized language because if we are, as we claim to be, such an old civilization, then one of the first things should be that we keep within certain civilizational norms. So I would like to say that why I am so disturbed by this whole vilification of Nehru, apart from uh, the absolutely uh, horrendous language in which it is conducted, is because Jawaharlal Nehru was not just our first Prime Minister. He was not just the builder of the Indian state on the basis of which we are still uh, living. He was not just the main architect uh, of our constitutional uh, structure. He was not just somebody who grounded parliamentary democracy in this country by showing parliament the respect that was due. You would not believe it, but he was attend every session of parliament stated late in the night, even when he was not well, in order to show how parliamentary, important parliamentary democracy was for this country. He was a statesman. He was a writer, he was a thinker, he was somebody who came up with original concepts like that of the scientific uh, temper. He was respected the world over. You probably, I don't know if people know, that in large parts of the world, in the Middle East, in Southeast Asia, in Europe, in radical circles the world over, Jawaharlal Nehru is still remembered as the hero of the youth of that time just as Mahatma Gandhi is remembered all over the world as a great leader and a great visionary. Jawaharlal Nehru, one of the things that we are told in this, uh, as I said, this WhatsApp university about Jawaharlal Nehru uh, is that he made so many mistakes. He was a weak leader. For example, all the time we are told, if only Patel had been the Prime Minister at the time of independence and when the first war with uh, Pakistan started over Kashmir in 1947-48, well, you know, Kashmir, this whole problem would never have arisen because Patel, the strong man, would have followed a very different policy. Similarly, the lies that are spread about Jawaharlal Nehru's relationship with Subhash Bose, Subhash Bose was another great patriot, but we are told that there were differences between Subhash Bose and Nehru. Subhash Bose and Jawaharlal Nehru, the relationship between them was like a relationship between a younger brother and an older brother. When Jawaharlal Nehru's wife, Kamla Nehru, died in Switzerland, Subhash Bose was there. And all the arrangements for the funeral, for looking after all the, the, and the emotional support to Indira, to Nehru, everything was done by Subhash Bose. Even after Subhash Bose's death, Jawaharlal Nehru, whenever he visited Calcutta, he would go and stay in the family house of Subhash Bose. And there is a room over there which was called Jawaharlal's room. So they had a very, very close relationship. So this is the way our history is distorted in order to serve the narrow political ends of the present regime. And this to the extent that they will vilify the greatest of our leaders, Jawaharlal Nehru. 
I think we need to think about what kind of politics, what kind of worldview, what kind of culture do these people represent uh, who are now seeking our votes and want to come back to power. Is this the kind of India that we want?